freedom of flight, to fly like a bird, has intrigued adventurers and innovators down the centuries. Back then, who would have believed jet planes circumnavigating the globe, satellites orbiting the planet, or man walking on the moon? In the purest form, hang gliding is the closest to nature, relying on the wind, changing temperatures and air currents to soar in prolonged flight with the breeze against your cheeks. The first known hang glider was flown in the 1890s by Otto Lilienthal. The Wright brothers' attempts to launch powered aircraft were to follow into the 20th century. The Great War hastened the development of powered flight and hang gliders didn't break away from the tow rope stage until the 1960s. Since then, the improvement has been rapid. They can soar to heights of 7,000 metres, cover distances of 350 kilometres and navigate triangular courses in cross-country competitions. Australia has been one of the leaders in the involvement. Australia now has the world champion team and the individual champion. The best pilots from 15 countries have come to Mount Buffalo in the Victorian Alps for the Blue Stratos World Cross Country Classic in the new year of 1985. The best performed visitor, Englishman John Pendry, a full-time competitor and one of the few to be fully sponsored. He too is the world for his sport and last year won the International Cup at the Australian Championship. Chip Henley of the United States, one of five Americans here. The Mount Buffalo Classic rates second only to the Owens Valley Classic in California. Another American, Pat Leach. The conditions in Australia most resemble his homeland, lofty launching sites and warm open fields. One of the locals, Ian Jarman, who was a member of the Australian team which won the World Championship in West Germany 1983. Bruno Moser of Switzerland should be used to the Alpine takeoffs. And the reigning world champion Steve Moyes of Sydney, another full-time professional. French-born current British champion Michel Carnet. The breathtaking Mount Buffalo site is the venue for the world championship in 1988. The world's best will be here then and are using the Blue Stratos Classic as a chance to get used to the 1400 metre altitude launch and meet the world champs in their home skies. The conditions will allow for climbs up to 3000 metres and hopefully a new distance record of 300 kilometres. It makes for palpitating excitement for the competitors and spectacular viewing. World champion Steve Moyes won here last year. He loves Buffalo, not only as a competition site, its beauty is travel on material. Yeah, it is. And uh, that's why I come here every year. And uh, you're flying around some of the most beautiful terrain you could ever imagine. And the air is always big, the clouds are always high. You know, the, uh, the whole place is really, you know, massive. And how do these conditions suit the Europeans? Quite different to anything they've ever flown. Um, a lot hotter than they used to. Uh, the mountains are pretty similar to the Alps. And the, the hospitality from the farmers there, I'm sure they'll enjoy. The takeoff is one of the most imposing in the world. The 350 metre sheer cliff face requires a pilot rating level five. Mistakes here could be sudden death. One American once said, you can try to win a cross-country contest or you can try to stay alive, but you can't do both. This contest is to prove how close to the truth that is. Here to go. The affable Michel Carnet left France for Britain and the regular competition of their professional league and became British champion. Clear to go. Yeah, clear to go. A near disaster for third seed Alan Daniel. If the nose hadn't caught the ramp when the kite tipped, he could have somersaulted down the cliff face. For John Pendry, next off, an unsettling experience. But now Daniel has his heart in his mouth as he prepares again for launch. Yeah. 
this time away. Alan Daniel goes on to win the day. The number two seed, the flying peanut, Englishman John Pendry, is jittery as he launches over the Ovens Valley. And world champion Moyes in hot pursuit as the wind swirls. It's really fantastic, really exhilarating stuff, I would think, providing it all goes well. But uh, look, there are some quite close to the bottom, and I, I guess they're all right, but they certainly put your heart in your mouth for a little while there, wondering what they're all about. So, when they first take off, they, the, the thermos just pick them up and take them away. A high reach of fantastic experience. Uh, where is it? Anybody got a fix? Yeah, he's going down to the switchback about 100 yards from the rock base. Is he all right? I'm not sure. Who is it? It's John Pendry. John, where are you? John! What? John! John! I'm over here. I'm all right, I'm over here. For the first time in his life, John Pendry has deployed his parachute. Unbelievably, he's found a clearing bigger than his kite. The trees softened the fall. It was upside down when I landed. I landed king post first, so I think it must have happened in the air. What attitude were you when you came down? Where were you in the glider? Um, well, I tried climbing up in the A-frame and it flipped over and uh, it came the right way up and then start, went into a steep dive and started picking up speed. So I moved towards the back of the sail again and it uh, went upside down again and uh, was coming down slower, so I thought I'd just stay there. I knew I wasn't that high above the ground, so I thought I'd better get my chute out quick. Uh, so I threw it out, open fine, and uh, came down fairly reasonably slowly, down, down through the trees, had a really gentle landing in the trees. Luckily, I haven't done too much damage. John Pendry's ground crew, girlfriend Hilary Smith. I just toured over the radio, and I was on my way down anyway. So uh, they said devil's elbow, and I was about there on the road. So I stopped some people, and they said, oh, yeah, we've just seen him coming down on a parachute. So I just waded through all this lot and got here. And he was all right. <laughs> well, he's lucky to be all right, I think. Yeah. Back on top of the mountain and Pendry is preparing for a relaunch before time runs out. Miraculously, he survived, but there is still concern about his condition. You sure you're all uh, healthy and yeah. not head spinning? No, I, I landed really gently. On the some, some people know how to do it, don't they? <laughs> you want another glider or you want to fly that one? I think I can fly this one. I'm pretty sure it's all right. I've got a broken left line and a broken base tube, that's yeah, so all. You haven't pulled out the leading edges. Yep, I've got space for You haven't looked at the leading edges in here? No, I'll have a look at it before I... Yeah, I'll have a look. I'll leave it like that. How are you? Shaken by the experience, a new one for him, Pendry has come through unscathed, but his kite needs some hurried repairs. His urge to compete will see him make it in time. Competition director Kelvin Smith explains why he gets a relaunch. There's no specific rule that covers a parachute deployment in this competition. I had to look at John's situation from where he actually deployed his chute, remembering that also that it wasn't his fault, it wasn't an error on his part that he had the chute deployment. It could have happened to any of the 66 pilots who were in the competition. Uh, from the point John was at, he had two options. He could have done the course, headed out for the course, he had not made that decision yet, or he could have bombed out and landed in the burrs. Seeing um, he was taken away the option to do the, either of those, I had to give him the benefit of the doubt that if he hadn't have done the course, he would have landed in the burrs and therefore gained a reflight. With the flirtation with death so vivid in his mind and the opposition already well out on the task, one of the favourites for the event tentatively edges towards a fresh start in the comp with a lot on his mind. I've got two main concerns. Uh, one is that the glider's OK, despite having checked it over. It's definitely worrying. The man who's always made hang gliding look so easy now has to pick up the pieces.
and the, and the glider seems to be flying fine. No different from before. So that's one worry out of the way, at least. Um, next, my next main concern is to, to try and recover from the, the position I'm in and uh, do well in the competition. Meanwhile, Alan Daniel is well out on course after his false start, which nearly saw him tumble down the cliff face to the valley floor below. The day proves to be a disappointment, and none of the 62 will complete the triangular course. Rather than fastest time, it's a struggle to stay airborne in late afternoon, and the one to fly furthest will don the That's Incredible jacket, which goes to each day's winner. Back over launch, Pendry is aware he needs to squeeze every last metre out of the thermals, which won't last. We've got four and a half thousand feet, which should be enough, although this headwind is very strong. Uh, I've got somebody in front of me as well, in the perfect position, so I can see what's happening in, in the air in front. Steve Moyes has an innate feel for the air. He's been hang gliding since he was 13, and he thrives on competition. It all ends up into who can go the longest. Whoever is in the air for, until the last one to land usually wins. So it's, it's race, 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 and then it's stay high, stay high, stay high as the day wears on. The Australian world champion and the Englishman, the top seeds, are already engaging in a head-to-head -head battle. Most of the big guns are landing out, Pendry, who started nearly three hours after them, still has height and is pushing for distance. Meanwhile, Moyes is on his last putt. The Daniel brothers, Alan and Bruce, have flown in tandem to share the first day honours. They're from the coastal soaring mecca, Stanwell Park in New South Wales. Alan was Australian cross-country champion two years ago. can still do better. And so in the fading light and heat, John Pendry, who recovered courageously from the worst experience of his life, is last to touch down. But his distance only matches his close rival Steve Moyes, and they share fifth place overnight. Well, how far did you get, John? Well, I got uh, to the turn point and back to here, which must be halfway back to uh, to the goal, something like that. If you drop a day, if you do badly one day in this competition, you, you can't, it's really difficult to get back up, so it's very important to do reasonably well every day. Why is it hard to get back up? Um, mainly because of the point system. Um, the, you're given one point per place, so if you if you drop a lot of a lot of places in one day, you've got to make them all up, and it's very difficult to do. Looks like um, I've done reasonably well for the day. So, you know, without, without having made that effort, I'd be out of the competition completely. It would stand no chance, but now I've got a chance. provides a variety of launch sites, depending on wind direction. 
Way below the towering peaks of Mount Buffalo lies Myrtleford. The airstream moving down the valley today is hitting Myrtleford Hill, providing the ideal lift for launch. In fact, today's task is long distance, out to infinity in one direction, which will take them well into New South Wales. an air of excitement at the prospects of having a really long flight. It is a day with a good breeze and the clouds help the job of spotting thermals. It will be late home tonight. Launch is now in order of cumulative placings. With such a big field, the skies can become congested, especially when your nearest rival is right next to you. Seen competition can cause mistakes. Rick Duncan in trouble. Steve, it's Rick. I've got myself in trouble. What's wrong? I can't get to the headwind landing area. I'm heading downwind but getting very low. I don't think I can make it out of these trees. I can see you. Keep going, you're nearly there. Rick? Rick, answer me. Duncan's frantic calls to his friend Steve Moyes ended when his glider hit the trees and crashed from branch to branch to the ground. Steve Blenkinsop sacrificed his good position to go to his aid. Next day, bruised and scratched, Duncan explains what happened as he repairs his kite for the flying ahead. He's running in third spot, only a couple of points behind the leader. Probably uh, a little bit of pressure and wasn't thinking real straight and uh, went into an area where I shouldn't have gone, a lot of trees, strong wind, so I turned around to head back into the wind and found that I wasn't going to make it to the headwind landing area. So I had to head tailwind and try and make it and didn't make it. It's just a stupid error. Steve, what did you see? I knew he was in trouble when he was about three or four kilometres from the clear spot to land and I saw his shadow getting awfully close to him and I uh, saw him zigzagging down a bit of a gully and uh, having to follow the contours of the gully just to stay clear of the trees and it was just a matter of time before he went in and I was cursing him because I knew that you know if he went in I had no choice you know, unless he got straight on the radio and said he was all right when he did go in I mean the glider just stopped dead you know, near the top of a tree fell out of the tree and I didn't see any movement and so there was really no choice you know it's in the rules You've got to help a glider in distress and 
Just had to go down and help him out. So you're still in with a chance? Yeah, I'm, uh, I dropped back two places to fifth, but um, from what I can imagine, I'm only a couple of points out of contention. John Pendry would have moved ahead of Fairway yesterday, and you can't give him too much room, so he's looking pretty good at the moment. The goal will be the airfield at Mount Beauty, which will be an airstrip with three gliders in their bags set out end to end, and that will be the aerial gate. There'll be a blue stripes bird in the air, it won't actually be on the airstrip, but at the lakeside end of the airstrip, and you must cross over that. Steve Blenkinsop was given 11th place in yesterday's task for overall sixth. Rick Duncan, 22nd, to drop to fifth. No records were set. Hendry's winning distance, 160 kilometres, to Tumbarumba at the foot of the New South Wales Alps. Moyes finished fourth. But this man will go home with a record. Hiroshi Yamamoto had never exceeded 18 kilometres before, but he broke the Japanese record of 76k in his greatest day in the air. Hiroshi came to Australia for experience and to improve his English. He'd never seen anything like the takeoff at Buffalo before. So you were scared, but you just, with guts, did it? Yes. You've been happy with your long flight? Yes, I fly 20 km, uh, 80 kilometers. Yes, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's great to see you here. Great to have you in Australia. Yes, uh, Australia, big country, great area. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Today's task, around a turn at Gundowring, then a speed run to Mount Beauty, about 80k. For the second time in the competition, one of the leaders has to jump back onto the horse after a fall. Rick Duncan, back in the fray. Starting to climb out, hit a good thermal here at the Happy Valley. And I can see Jarzo and Steve Moyes and Pendry. There's a lot of wind coming from the north, heading up the valley towards Mount Beauty, so we have to battle a headwind. John Pendry appears to be having a bit of trouble and he's on his way down and it looks like he has missed the turn point. It's hard to say at this time, but he has appears to have missed it. Duncan and Moyes and Kim on the ground are trying to plot Pendry's downfall. Steve, what's your position now? Well, I'm in that bowl at about 5-1. That is him. Are you the highest in that thermal, Steve? The flight along the ridge to the turn point at Gundowring is proving a real battle into the strong headwind. Few will make it, but most of those who do will run with the tailwind and make Mount Beauty, except Pendry. Oh no, I think I might have blown it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep trying, keep right into the ridge. See, uh, I'm losing it. Seem to be going down. Not much I can do now. I found, oh, I found a little ridge I can saw on about 200 feet from the ground. If I can just hang here a, a little while, I just might possibly get back up. Better keep trying. It doesn't seem to be working. I think he was going, I'm not sure. 
did he get the... T was he going to the turn point? Is that the sort of place you'd land when you were coming back? Did he? Yeah, I guess so. That guy up... There's, you know, there's two up there. There's one that's low. Some have taken their photograph at the intersection with not enough altitude to get back. The overseas visitors are having a closer look at the Australian countryside and livestock than they really wanted. Landouts have the ground crews scurrying and the pilots, like Pat Leach, frustrated at what might have been. No, oh, that's really too bad. Good flight, Pat. If I could adjust one more thermal, would have got me all the way back. Easy. Looked like this whole area was rich soil. Looks like we've got another guy up here who's starting to turn now. Could have been back in 10 minutes, I swear to God. Could have been back in 10 minutes. 15, anyway. Mount Beauty Airfield, and among the first home, Rick Duncan, battered and scarred from yesterday's tilt with the trees. He took off late and made it, coming in triumphant. His comeback so complete, he wins the day. What's your name? <laughs> I had to redeem myself for landing in the trees. Second home and third for the day, the German champion Ottfried Heinelt, placing 12th overall. On a day when only a dozen of the 62 get home, it's great to have your best day. Rod White from Byron Bay will improve no end on his overall 26th with today's sixth place finish. Steve Moyes reaches Mount Beauty, unlike Pendry, but perhaps his preoccupation with him has cost him some vital places. The world champ is 10th. Yeah. How did you go? Straight to the Kiwa? Yeah, I come uh, north, right on the south side of the Pinnacle, then headed uh, north-east, straight across into that bowl just before the turn point. Oh, Got a good ride. I saw you hit there just when I hit there. Oh, I Except you were about a kilometre ahead of me. Yeah, yeah, you were a little south, it, drifting in one, you know, the spine that runs up. Up. Yeah, you climbed out and got straight there. Got good air all the way. Stevie's on his way. Oh, mate, bury him. <laughs> Stevie will probably get the second fastest time because we took off at the same time. Well, Jarzo took off with me and he's with Stephen, so Stephen has have to beat Jarzo. Yeah. And Kane was with us too. Yeah. So yeah. he'd have to beat him. And Rick, you've, oh, he's Kane you've now. Won the day. It looks like it, yes. It, um, we took off late and we got better air. So here we are. Well, this morning you were pretty low and shaken after yesterday's crash. How do you feel now? Oh, a lot better now. <laughs> we got up in the cool air and the brain started, started working a bit more efficiently. Feel good now. So we've got a, it's good we've got a few um, gliders coming in here on launch now, on landing. So they probably beat me because he launched after me. Did he? So did Jarza. Here comes Jars now. See, they both might have beaten me, you know. He and Jarman, a member of Australia's champion team, is lying third overall. 
Later on, the calculations will place him 11th for the day, one behind Moyes. Oh, you. <laughs> Michel Carnet, the Frenchman representing Britain, and the German Heinelt compare yeah, flights. You, yeah, no. yeah. Me, I know. I had to go, so yeah. we went together. I had to come back. Henry, and... come to me, you see? Yeah. We are the same. It was you. I, yeah. Wow. And I flew, and yeah. Henry goes on the other side and must land. And I come a little bit higher. I didn't go because I thought Pandre was too, uh, was too low. With yeah. you, I thought that was wrong. Yeah. But you did all right. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh you. Come on! Tell me. Come on! Yeah! Point her into the wind! No. Yeah! I got it. Ah, that was close. Bill Moyes, Steve's father, is one of the pioneers of hang gliding. In his day, he jumped off into the unknown and more than once came a cropper. day and back to the awesome takeoff in front of the chalet at Mount Buffalo. Today's task, the same as opening day, out to a turning point and back to the Valley Homestead which has been base for the competition for the last 10 days. Conditions in northeastern Victoria in midsummer are usually perfect, but this year they have disappointed. Again today, the outward leg is into a buffeting headwind. 12, 54, 56. <coughs> Steve Moyes and John Pendry have filled the top two places since day three. Moyes leads and needs only to beat him by two places to clinch victory. It's the classic match race. Um, I've just got to forget, forget everybody else and just go for it. That's, that's all I can do. If I mark anybody, um, I risk not winning by enough, so I, I'm just going to go for it. Just uh, do my best. Well, with such a narrow point spread between you and John Pendry, how are you going to play it today? Well, I'm just going to fly very aggressively in the lift, use every, all, all the lift I can, get as high as possible, and uh, just do what I do best, and that's fly hang gliders, uh, make my own decisions, and uh, uh, I think today's going to be quite stable, so I'm going to hang out, hang back, and uh, then come through on the finish. What he's obviously going to do is try and mark me, uh, and if he, if he manages to do that the whole time and finish immediately behind me, then I've lost, so I've got to lose him. Seventh is Michel Carnet, the Frenchman in the British team. Will he fly team tactics with Pendry to help him overtake the leader? Uh, yes, if I get up and then I fly with John, I will obviously try to... Uh, to uh, help him uh, beat Steve, because if he beats Steve with one more person, then he will win the competition. He's got to uh, beat Moyes by four points, so uh, if I can help him, I will help him. What might that involve? Uh, just uh, getting in between um, John and Steve, making sure there's a few places in there, so you might even uh, land out deliberately? If uh, it, no, help. no, I will not do that. If I can beat John as well, I will beat John. Whoa, 54, 56. John need people to beat Steve as well. He need to beat Steve, obviously, but he need a lot of people to beat Steve as well. So, you know, I will do my best anyway, whatever happens. Neil Mersham of Byron Bay. He is equal fifth. 
with a best placing of third on the opening day. South Australian Steve Blenkinsop from Gladstone hasn't taken any ill effects from stopping to help Rick Duncan after his brush with the trees. In fact, he has improved to share fifth place. And Rick Duncan, whose crash was costly, a winner of two days, he is to lose his fourth place today to his rescuer. And for third place, Ian Jarman, like all the other leading Australians, results in this competition will be important for the selection of the team for the forthcoming World Championship. Flying peanut with the difficult task of catching moyes. And last away, the confident defending champion. Moyes, the current world champion, ladies and gentlemen. And 1985 Buffalo winner. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to move over right onto the ridge to try and get maximum lift from, from the ridge there. The, the lift's getting good now. The last thermal I hit was rough, brought back instant memories of uh, the one that flipped me upside down. I, I almost left the thermal, in fact. Although I was quite low, I, I almost pulled out of it because it was that rough. Pendry's going up in front of me. He's, you know, he's, he's going straight so that uh, he covers the ground further, so I'm going to turn and do the opposite of what he's doing. Uh-oh, he's got away from me now. He's uh, above me and behind and going with that thermal. I think I'll um, just go as I was just going now anyway. So Moyes is going to abandon match race tactics and fly his own race instead of covering every move Pendry makes. With the field off in the distance, it's a surprise to see Rick Duncan back. You've had a real up and down sort of a competition. What are you doing back here? Well, um, I thermaled up on launch to about 5,000 feet. The thermals weren't real strong and then went across to McLeod and got a lot of lee side uh, air, which is going down. And the other guys, Pendry and Moyes, they saw what happened to me. So they detoured and went on the lower ridges. And now they're on their way, but they're making real slow progress. So hopefully the thermals will get better. And because I drifted my way back and landed in the burrs, I'll get another go. The flying in Australia is, is really good. You know, in, it's a lot hotter than in England, obviously. It's, it doesn't rain much here, and the ground is very hot, very dry, so we get really strong thermals, which means we can go very high and you know, go for miles, following all these ridges covered of trees and all these rock faces. The world record is 187 miles, and um, I believe somebody only a week ago did 182 miles down here, Ricky Duncan, I think. So I think it's... Any time now, somebody's going to beat the world record here.
headwind is like a brick wall and Moyes is in trouble. Moyes well short of the turn point while the two Brits, Carnet and Pendry, flying as a team, pass overhead. The thermals are being broken up by the wind and the lift is poor. Fighting the pounding the kite is taking, Pendry holds on to stay in the air. Steve Moyes said earlier that he loves coming here every year and that the visitors would enjoy the hospitality of the local farmers. The impromptu tea party is great, but you can't improve your position while on the ground. Are you, are you thinking you might have won it? No, I'm thinking I might have come second. For John Pendry, satisfaction in coming from behind to beat the world champion at home. Yeah, it is. I think I was uh, pretty nervous at launch and, you know, it's something that's so difficult to do. And I still can't quite believe I managed to do it. It's, uh, I don't know, don't know what to say. Were you pleased with your own flight or only in comparison to his? Um, no, I was pretty pleased with my own flight. I thought, thought it went pretty well. There's only a couple of people got past me. And um, considering the, the headwind we were having to battle against, you know, I thought I did all right. And where does that place you now for the next World Championships? Do you, give, you know, maybe go in equal favourite with Steve Moyes or ahead of him or what? Um, I don't know. That's for other people to say, really. <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, it gives me a bit more confidence anyway. And will you be back out here in 1988 for the Worlds when they're here? Yeah, definitely, definitely. With a big chance of winning? I hope so. <laughs> It all helps, all the experience. Well done, John. Thanks very much. Later in the year, Pendry would become world champion, beating Moyes in a close competition in Austria. Moyes' defeat here, a prelude to his losing his world title. Ian Jarman, third here, and in the Australian team, which also would lose the title. Steve Blenkinsop, fourth, but the Good Samaritan won the Sportsmanship Award, voted by all the pilots. Moyes and Rick Duncan, second and fifth, among a group of Australians just behind the victorious Englishman. And Michelle Carnet would be in the British team with Pendry to take the World Championship from the Australians, who hope to regain their place on top of the world when Mount Buffalo hosts the next World Championship in 1988. Thank <laughs> you.